with daylight saving effects on circadian rhythm is psychologist and podcaster Dr. Dan Bond. Dr. Bond, it's so nice to meet you. Thank you, Gail. I'm so happy to be here and talk with you guys about sleep today. So. Yeah, yes. I, I, and I think it's so cool because I have to be honest with you. I, like millions of Americans, struggle with getting a good night's sleep. Sure. And I never realized that a therapist could actually be the go-to to help you get that good night's rest. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think for most of us, we think of like, like therapy as like, you know, working with someone on the depression or the anxiety or those types of things. We don't think of sleep per se, but there's a lot of things that psychology can tell us about how we sleep and really how we respond to it. So, so. let's talk about this time of year because mm -hmm. when we, we start setting the clocks back and we start setting clocks forward, mm -hmm. people really think about the impact that sleep has on our health. Mm -hmm. And this is something that you work with patients on day in and day out. Absolutely. And so we, we do know that these time transitions, which happen about twice a year roughly, this one we're about to go into is the fall back. So we're moving from daylight savings time into standard time. And there's a lot of like known challenges that show up for people, including increased uh, you know cardiac events that can show up for some people. Depression can show up for some people as well. And really what we know is that these effects really kind of you know wear off after roughly about a couple weeks. But getting good quality sleep, that's when these kind of changes to our routine can really mess us up. So how do you help patients get a good night's sleep? Great question. How I help people is actually number one, to see how are you currently sleeping. So what are you currently doing in terms of your, your evening routine, your wind down routine, and most importantly, what are you doing in the middle of the night? Most of us think of sleep as something that just happens, you know, when we're in bed or when we're, we're you know, our lights out at the end of the day. But really sleep is a 24 hour challenge. So what you're doing in the morning has a direct impact on what you do, what your sleep looks like that night. You know, what activities you're doing in the afternoon impact your sleep. And then how we respond to bad sleep is really key. So that's what I work with people on. And uh, this is funny because I was actually talking to a, a, a colleague that's on the show quite a bit. And she said her husband was really having a difficult time with sleep. So he went to a professional like yourself up uh -huh. in the New York region. And she said, you know, I could say things all day long, but <laughs> suddenly you hear it from a professional like sure. yourself and it's, it's easier to follow those orders. So if mm -hmm. somebody were to take some actionable steps today mm -hmm. to start having a better night's sleep, what would you, what would be some of your top recommendations? Great question. <laughs> I have three things, especially with this new time change about okay. to kind of happen. Right. So, you know, the very first thing I would say is, is number one, when you wake up, expose yourself to light. Ideally, you know, natural daylight whenever it's in the day. Um, but really, exposing yourself to that light is going to help you reset your circadian rhythm, which is one of those things that really gets kind of out of sync with our sleep cycle. So, number one, wake up daylight essentially is a key thing. Number two is try and keep a consistent routine for yourself even though you know we're about to gain an hour and it's always easier to sleep in an extra hour than it is to lose an hour of sleep mm -hmm. so that's why the spring ahead is usually more challenging for people but I would say try your hardest to stick with that regular routine um, and then number three if you do have to take a nap absolutely try and limit it to 20 minutes maybe 30 minutes max um, those three things I think can really help you navigate this transition pretty successfully what do you say to folks who have issues when they wake up in the middle of the night and then they just can't go back to sleep great question because this happens a lot for a lot of us mm -hmm. right you know, you might wake up to use the restroom, you might wake up because you're, who knows why, right? It could be a dream, it could be lots of different things. What we know is important is if you wake up in the middle of the night and you can't go back to sleep, is to number one, get out of your bed, get out of your bedroom. Go to some other place in your house. It could be, you know, a kitchen, a living room, and try and do something that's not too activating. So things like I would encourage you to maybe to not watch TV, not look at your iPhone or your device like that. Like <laughs> torture. To, yeah, I know. <laughs> the two it things is. that I do first. <laughs> Absolutely. What was I watching on Netflix yes. right before I fell asleep? Yes. hundred percent. And I'm the same way, right? I, you, it's hard, right? Yeah. Because there's so many out, the things out there. But what you're really trying to teach your brain to do, especially in the middle of the night, is that you're trying to tell your brain, like, hey, there's nothing here to really see. Like, if I'm going to color in my coloring book or fold laundry or do whatever, it doesn't matter what, that your brain is like, okay, okay, there's nothing for here, here for me to see, let me go back to sleep again. And that's really what you're trying to do is not do anything that activates your brain to continue thinking more about this stuff. What if, you, what if you're dealing with like issues and problems by day, which for me anyways, these issues seem so much more serious mm -hmm. in the middle of the night mm -hmm. than they do when I face them in the daylight. Why mm -hmm. is that? Great question. This one has a lot to do with anxiety or really just general worry that shows up for a lot of people. 
I would say it's pretty common for sleep problems and anxiety difficulties to go hand in hand. So for most of us, we go through our day and we're like, okay, I can kind of push it out. I can push it away. I can like not have to feel whatever it is. But sleep is one of those things where we can't force it to happen. We have to allow it to bloom essentially, right? We okay. have to let it unfold on its own. And that's when this stuff starts to creep back in. So there's a couple of different strategies you can do when anxiety shows up in the middle of the night, as well as improving your ability to handle some of that anxiety during the daytime too, is a key for that. It, do, you, do you feel like journaling at all helps mm -hmm. for doing that? Absolutely, so a couple different approaches for anxiety when it shows up is you can kind of keep a bedside journal that you just write it on there and you, once you put it in the journal, you can say, okay, it's there, I'll take care of that tomorrow. Ah. Another thing that works really well for people is what we call scheduled worry, which is really just this idea that you set aside maybe 30 minutes, not right before you go to bed, but maybe within your like hour wind down routine mm -hmm. for you getting ready to bed, and you just write, you journal out everything that you're thinking about, just kind of like unloading it from your mind. Um, Another really kind of helpful one that I see for a lot of my clients is really kind of a, it's kind of like a, a categories game that you play with yourself that really if you're trying to fall asleep and your brain is just still thinking about random things, you think of a word and let's say the word is, you know, uh, a peach for some reason. And then you start thinking for that first letter, you say, okay, what other words start with a P? Okay, uh, a pickle or, you know, it could be something else. And you just kind of <laughs> visualize these options. That's so cool. And what you're doing is you're kind of randomizing your brain a little bit and that can also take your attention off of whatever that word was so Dr. Ron it's been such a pleasure meeting you and I really appreciate you joining us on Bloom today I know you have a podcast mm -hmm. and Bloom does too so you'll yep. have to join us one day absolutely I'd love to okay, yes absolutely. you can follow along all, all right. right to learn more about this story and Dr. Dan Bond just head to wfla.com slash bloom